Good afternoon. Welcome to this program. Um, my name is Raju Madhavan. I am a um, you know, uh, experience facilitator in the experiential learning. And uh, today's topic is a uh, very interesting one. And uh, you know, we had a lot of uh, registrations, about 100 plus, and it's going to be on change. Yeah. Uh, but the way the methodology that we are going to adopt uh, is something on experiential learning. And uh, this program is being, um, the experiential learning comes under a brand called Eagles Flight for us. And I work very closely with the BYLD team. Many of you might be knowing uh, BYLD, just a quick run up about BYLD and a little bit about Eagles Flight also before we get in. Um, BYLD as a group, we call it build your own leadership differentiators. We have multiple products, uh, international products, brands that we have brought into one uh, place. Uh, many of you know about it as well. Eagles Flight is also one of them. And uh, the way learning happens in Eagles Flight uh, and experiential learning is going to be done through a um, game, yeah, a very elaborate uh, simulation that we run. Um, before I move ahead, I want to set the expectation here today. Our topic, while it is on experiential, uh, you know, uh, a change per se, um, we have a product under the Eagles Flight uh, banner, which is called Windjammer. And today's attempt is to give you an insight into how these um, you know, experiential learning simulations run and how this methodology is very different from your normal um, chalk and talk method, so to speak. And you know, what's the kind of benefit that you will get? And where does this change hit us? You know, how do we learn about change uh, per se? So this is all about the methodology of experiential learning and in specific to Windjammer as a product. So a uh, little bit about Eagles Flight. Um, we had done one um, webinar a couple of months back on another product. Some of you might have attended that. Uh, Eagles Flight is a Canadian-based company, and they are specialists in creating simulations. What they do is they take a, a, a learning um, module and they create a structured experience. Yeah, structured experiences. It, it, you can't call it, we don't want to call it a game or an activity because there is a lot of things that goes into uh, uh, designing a simulation. So it is, they take the structured experience and then they say that what are those elements, metaphors, so to speak, that can be um, you know, uh, put into the simulation. So they start designing that. And when we go through the experience, you know, we are learning by doing, and that's what is experiential learning. And what it also does is it accurately reflects workplace situations. Yeah, that's the whole intent. Of course, you can't compare apples to apples. The, you know, real life is much more complex. We understand that. And, uh, you know, as we know the situation outside, you know, things are changing and we are all looking at, you know, how do we manage uh, situations like this? However, the gist of what the learning that comes out of each of the simulation um, we have something called a debrief, yeah? And in the debrief, once the experience is done, we connect it back to change. You know, in this case, it is change, but there are various other, uh, you know, as, uh, experiences that we have. Each will be catching to multiple different areas. Uh, why Eagles Flight? They are, um, you know, the leading, um, you know, designers in the world. And we have been uh, using them in India for a pretty long time, six years uh, for now. Yeah. Now, why is this methodology so um, you know, well entrenched? Now we have classroom method where chalk and talk happens. We have video-based methods. Whereas we all know that from adult learning point of view, as adults, we learn by doing. Yeah? The kinesthetic is important, touch and feel is important, and, and the experience is important. So we, we Design, every design for Eagles Flight or any simulation goes through these four stages. And this fits into the Coles model as well, where you first talk about the experience, then you get into you know, what is it that we learned out of this, and then you go into so what, and then the action planning comes in terms of you know, what. 
So uh, that's the uh, essence of experiential learning from Eagle's Life in India. Um, as many of you might already know, we have six products that we have brought in. Uh, each is having a very different team, very different learning outcome, etc. And the reason I say team is when people, participants walk into the classroom, yeah, they are going to be surprised, walked by, you know, the lot of material on the table, you know, there's a lot of uh, props available. We ourselves are decked up in, you know, with different roles, etc. So uh, this is how the design goes. Every simulation has a team. And the reason also there is we want to transport the participants into a uh, world where they forget about their current rules and current uh, problems or uh, relationship, and they behave naturally. These are behavioral simulations to that extent. So, um, where and when it can be used, I will come back to this later also. But this is such a beautiful methodology. It can be plugged in at multiple areas. And it can be at a, a sales conferences, leadership uh, conclaves, where you're having three-day strategy sessions, you can bring that in. Or it can be part of curriculum. And also we have multiple companies which have put it in the curriculum where you know, they have a four-day program and half day, you know, they uh, put eager strike simulations. Because that's where they were able to demonstrate what they have learned as well. As simple as getting into team bonding, or a team engagement, both are something which we can, you know, this can catch up to. Numbers, again, we will talk about numbers. This can catch a very large number as well. So today's focus is on Windjammer. Again, as I said, everything is team for us, yeah? So in this case, when you say wind, of course, you know, we can see the logo there. This is a sailing concept, which means when participants come in, we are going to put them into teams, but each of the team will be called a crew in this case. And let's look at the experience part of it. And I'm going back to that point of choice model which we spoke about. What is this experience all about? I want you to show that. So uh, the storyline, each of these has a storyline when you have a team. Uh, they're all part of a sailing uh, association of the islands. They're in an island. And the island is popular for, I think, but sailing. Yeah? So every year, thousands and millions of people come to this island and then they kind of uh, uh, want to be part of this and the sailing organization has found an opportunity here and we are calling it the hungry market remember i spoke about metaphors everything that we do in a simulation is about metaphor so hungry market means they uh, the participants are going to build something i'm going to show you that and they can create as many products as they possibly can of course within a specific time timeline they want to do Yes, there are going to be five crews, you know, five teams, five sets of teams. Uh, each table will have five members. So typically 25 people is what the, the simulation is all about. If you have more people, we can put them into sections. That's okay. Now, each of them have a color coding, and uh, this is uh, where we put them into. I'm telling you about the experience, uh, what happens in the classroom. Now, these five crews, what are they supposed to do? Yeah? They have two types of raw materials going to them. Again, as I said, it's all kind of stuff. We actually give a carabiner. Carabiner is these locks, and each are again color coded, and there are ropes as well, again color coded. What's going to happen? And on the table, they have a lot of other stuff also, because this is about understanding uh, the game at that moment. So they are given some money. Uh, they have a starting position of $50, which means the material plus cash together would be our $50 cash. This is like a budget for them. Now they have some buying and selling to do, so there's some forms available for them. But what is interesting is this graph you see here. Yeah. So everybody is given a graph because you know, that graph does, I'll come back to that in more detail, what is it all about? But these are the things that are available to them. Now typically, here you go, uh, our bankers, each of these simulations you know, sometimes need a banker. There's a lot of material that's on the table. This is a typical banking station. You have all the raw material on the table. Um, with forms and etc. So they sell here as well as they collect the finished goods as well. There is a close up of the same table. This is all kind of stick, yeah? So they can touch and feel, and each of them gives, they will be given a sack like this, which has some raw material as well. Now I'm going to show you a, a short video, a one minute clip on what happens in the briefing and the kind of way we set up this entire experience. So here you go. I'll give it a chance here.
Okay, so let me just replay that. I'm sorry that you're not able to probably I have put on my headphones and removing that now. I'm going to replay this, so just give me a moment. Tell me if you're able to hear now. So today, we're going to get you a same day. Are you ready? Yes! Very good. This is the kind of food saving what we saw, what we discovered this last one year. And I'm telling you that I set it up before. You know, there's uh, this particular island where saving has been very popular in part of the country. And look at this, you know, the kind of tools they work together. What's this? What's this? What's this? Can you see on the right there? sample briefing you know where all the teams are sitting together in, in in fact for this particular um, session we had three sections which means we had about 80 odd people everybody and we had three sections you know, we are giving a common briefing for everybody and the you know, simulation happens in, in you know, within the silos so this is a typical briefing that happens and of course you know so here is a static picture also of that uh, this is how we, you know, deck up ourselves. We, we, we are uh, the sailors, and you know, there's a president of the sailing association. The bankers are supporting us, etc. Um, yes, the material goes onto the table. They are all now, you know, trying to get a grab of, you know, what is it that they have with them. So they, uh, this is a red team, typical red team. We did it for a very senior audience. This is like a managing director and their reportees, um, you know, for for an engineering firm. Um, and, they, and, and this is very immersive, you know, it doesn't matter about the age, everybody gets involved in this. Look at the second picture um, here also, you know, uh, there's a blue team, there's a green team, all of them are so much immersed because there's a lot of interaction that's going to happen now. Now, yes, we said that there are going to be five teams, five different colors, you know, but there is a condition and this is where we start bringing in a lot of twists to the tail because remember, this is all about change, you know, where does it come? Now, we have five teams, but the challenge is with the money that they have, the teams can buy only their color raw material. Yeah, which means a red team can buy only a red caravan or a red rope, an orange team, sunset team can only buy an orange caravan or an orange, you know, orange rope. And that, that is from the banking team, yeah, the banking station I showed you. What they do within them is something, you know, entirely up to it. But what is the objective that we are getting into? Their objective given mandated is they need to leverage product sales to deliver as much profitable revenue as possible within the given marketplace. Now, remember why we are talking about change, it all boils down to are we getting money on the table from the customer? Are we making money? And that's the orientation that we want to give them. And not only revenue, this is profitable revenue we're going to talk about. And we'll tell you why I'm saying profitable revenue. Yes, so they are, uh, given the object, where is this challenge coming from? Here is a twist again. We said they are going to create manufacture selling products. Now they have to create one of these five or all five, the combination of five doesn't matter. They can manufacture five products. Now, if you see the product one wanderer, it comes with at least two other colors. Yeah. So I cannot create a product without collaboration. Now collaboration starts coming in. So I want you to start looking from the you know, uh, 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 real life also. We are, these five colors are like five six different departments. You cannot work alone. You have to work in the hoteling with other uh, departments also. So Wanderer, you need to work with other two um, teams and then try to create the Wanderer. However, look at the product four, yeah? Product for the Wilhelm is seems very simple. It needs only one other color. So the blue green starts collaborating with green and be done with it. You know, they can start manufacturing as many as they want. However, a green also comes in other products. Now the question is, are the blue and green teams, they typically go form for Terry and then only focus on that. However, do they have a role to play on other product lines? And that is something which is where the you know game unravels itself. Okay, so here are five products. Each product is a combination of different colors. 
and the team as we said this is a hungry market we keep repeating that objective yeah they need to make profitable sales period and it has to be done in a hungry market how are they going to do that of course they are the five products i showed you they are going to create that and they are going to sell this to this hungry market they are going to take it back to the banker and the bankers are going to give them money how much money i'm going to you know uh, relate to that to the chart that i showed you in a short while however when you say profitable sales how do you choose the winner you know and this is where again you know we are you know twisting the tail a little bit it's not by your numbers alone yeah you can't say i as a green team i got more money from the red team because it doesn't work that way we are saying you need to exceed the world average by the percentage meaning that a red team has is actually competing with the reds of the world we have a global average that we have which we will share with them as well yeah but the typical mindset and going back to the five department that we have i'm slipping into the detail also just to give you a view started in the picture is a, a, a digital team probably you know keeps comparing with a uh, infrastructure team for example yeah now they saying i made more money than them yeah but then what is the top management going to say no 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 you can't do that you need to compare with the other infrastructure team in another company or across so that's where this twist comes in but you know people assume that i'm competing with a person next table next to it yeah and that's where it happens how do they compete okay there are 10 rounds in each of these 10 rounds they start manufacturing these products yeah now the, again the change is when you talk about chain each of these rounds are like 5 minutes each it doesn't stop you know we don't stop after round 1 2 3 it just goes boom 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 you know and then you are moved into the next round which means i am manufacturing product in round 1 but should i sell it in round 3 4 when do i sell it that depends on when i say profitable revenue i need to look at what are the profits now again look at from from an organization point of this 10 rounds are nothing like like your timeline for a year yeah now how are you playing this 10 rounds are you involving in all these 10 rounds at all or not is something that we observe why i am saying that and that brings us back to that market dimension chart that i was saying this is how a chart looks like we have five products you all know that the 10 rounds for each of these products is given in the chart now the payout for each of the product is also now given in this table there is nothing you know secret here we give this upfront to the team saying that you know what this is when this product peaks for example we saw wanderer if they go manufacture and sell in round 1 they are not going to get any money so teams know that they are very smart they don't sell it obviously in round 2 also they don't sell it round 3 yes 9000 dollars fantastic you know but the question is are you making money because if i am manufacturing wanderer i need to collaborate with two other teams to get this going so what is the kind of you know money that i am paying for that is something but they will have to work out is it profitable or not is left to the teams because we only worry about the you know final profits that we give them from 50000 onwards where did they go so this is how the market demand chart looks like and the teams now for example i spoke about product 4 which is the blue and green team they are collaborating and they are only focusing on that product 4 and they are only looking at the profits for those peak but is that the only money on the table yeah and when you say change hits them change can hit other teams also as well as the blue and green team so when the change hits you what is it that you as a team are doing and remember each team has five to six people so if one person is building this what are the rest of the team them doing you know so those are the things that we are going to link back to the uh, objective and do the do the briefing here you go we close the briefing by this um, you know the chart that we give them saying what is the typical world average that we need to benchmark against and typically people people don't make a note of it yeah now again this goes back to in an organization you have these benchmarks available but i am always looking at you know what is my next door competition trying to do so this is what is the briefing all about now here what happens you know when we start experience uh, this is the timer that's on on and round 6 is what we are doing and this is again that senior management team as said now people are moving around they're running and they're trying to get things organized 
sell, etc. Um, let me also show you one more uh, video. Actually, the energy on the ground is like awesome, actually. Yeah, so here you go. This is again the three sections. <laughs> There you go. So that's a sample video for you. That's the kind of energy teams are completely immersed and involved and they are actually experiencing change. There's 10 rounds, things are changing and they need to be looking in multiple directions. And that's exactly what we are trying to simulate an actual change as well. Exactly. Yes, Adi, you know, like a mini marketplace and there's a lot of collaboration that is forced upon them. They cannot avoid it. And uh, they, they, there's a lot of uh, shouting, there's negotiations and, and uh, and, and there's a lot of assumptions that teams also make. And that's where you know, this entire debrief is leveraged upon. So, um, so that's so much about the experience. And now we will be getting into the debrief. And before I do that, you know, any questions that um, uh, any of you have, you can unmute yourself and ask uh, probably, um, or you can type it in the chat as well. So let me see if I can answer that. So if you have any questions later also, you can write back to us, uh, that's okay. Now what we saw till now is only the experience, meaning what the you know, participants, when they come in, what they've gone to, they actually experience change. Now what happens? And this is where we say catching the wind of opportunity. Have team really leveraged the opportunity that is presented to them and saying, you know, and maximize on the money that they have. So uh, typical debrief, you know, when you talk about uh, experiential learning simulation, it has three phases. The first phase is the briefing where as a facilitator, we tell them what to do. And second is like the video that you saw. They actually go into the marketplace and start negotiating, interacting, et cetera. So that is something which they do. And the third phase is the debrief. And this is where we talk about why did we do what we did. And remember in this, section you know this is all a perception you know, uh, uh, you know perception building uh, exercise people realize you know we only ask questions and have them interact and chat about it saying what happened in the room and what is it that you know we can say you know so what you know what is the connection back to the work world so we establish that by asking uh, a simple question on what is you know wind jammer all about etc but look at the metaphors there's so many metaphors that to pick from so if your organization is only wanting to focus on two or three of these metaphors, we can build that and you know, extrapolate and, and take it as a learning and see what is the reality that's happening on the ground. Five colors, there are five teams. It can be, as I said, you know, five uh, different units within the organization. Five products, these are the products or services that you're dealing with. You cannot deliver it alone. You, there is has to need to be a collaboration that uh, needs to happen. You cannot do it alone. But you may choose to say that like blue and green, you may choose to say, I only will work with this person, but it doesn't work with it, you know, because the other teams are also needing your expertise. What do you do? Now, 10 rounds, as I said, is like, like your year, you know, what do you do in this year? The price for each round, how is flexible fluctuating? This is, you know, when is your product peaks are? For example, if you're in retail space, you know, Diwali or, you know, Shankaranti or, you know, Christmas is a peak for you then you prepare for those rounds. Till that time you are creating your inventory and probably keeping it. Not that you're not selling it, you're still more selling in the marketplace, but you might use it in the you know, uh, big bank way as well. But the choice is yours. 
it also depends on the cash you know uh, you are given a budget how are you managing the budget are you spending all of them are you rotating the money yeah in fact uh, we talk about profitability also in terms of how quickly are you managing your cash because change management also is while you are managing change your focus still should be on the profitability now different raw material crops this is something which is surprising remember i was telling about the assumption yeah now a red team thinks that when they go and buy the raw material it's at 500 dollars they think the green and blue teams are also paying 500 dollars maybe maybe not but they don't clarify that assumption and what happens is you take a hit on the profitability of that yeah so different raw material cost again is you know you need to be challenging that to say what is your you know uh, uh, what is it because you if you hire a person for your department it might be very different from you know what i hire for my department and the cost would be very different in that case now the price offers for each of these 10 rounds again we spoke about that profitability when you say profitability what does it mean for you is it only the raw material that you are you know buying and you are selling your own product yeah. can you also sell the raw material to other teams and get money yeah of course you can get some profits there but that's very really a short term but the best money is when you talk about profitability from collaboration saying that, okay you know what i'm going to help you build this product but you give me a stake in this yeah and that could be a much better way of looking at it but what i'm saying to say is there's so many metaphors and our key is when you talk about the um, you know not, you know what are those success factors that you have got and this is what we call it in a sailing parlance we go back to the sailing uh balancing what are these navigation points of success all of you boys boys are these floating devices in a sea where uh it gives you a you know kind of a rough sketch on what is your um you know marketplace what is your area of leverage beyond which it's going to be a danger it's a risk so if i have to catch the wind of opportunity in the changing environment what are those things that i should be looking at and in the debrief we talk about five things with them yeah we talk about what are those have you hit every high point yeah in your in, in your real life also you know there are high point no question is how do i know my high points is a very different question that's also a you know point of discussion a table top discussion which we can do for your organization say how do i know my high points is it a one point thing or is it something which a collaboratively people you know contribute towards that are we planning for all 10 rounds yeah blue and green team they wait only for the peak of in the ninth round or you know eighth round or ninth round what are you doing in the rest of the time you have you looked at it you know in a very different manner are you using your crew wisely also you have five people six people with you what else can they do if not you know waiting for this building this product along with it what else can they do fourth one very important are you building it all five color this again goes back in your organization you have multiple products are you leveraging all your expertise and you know services to go back and give a cross sell up sell to the organization and you know, not to the customer as well or are you only looking at your department and say you know siloed approach that i am only looking at this i am not going to look beyond because i only look at my profit so it all gets interconnected and finally change the sales when the change when the, the changing winds things will change and that's you know we have seen what's happening with covid it's a very surprise thing and how the entire business is getting redefined in such manner what are we doing yeah what are the uh, other things that we can do how else can help you know can we leverage so we go into each of these points and when we look at it we have a deep dive discussion with the teams i'm only giving you a, you know indication here we'll not go uh, deep into it but here when you say hitting every high point you know we will be asking the question what is you know taking advantage every profit opportunity mean to you yeah are you managing cash flow which means that i can still people don't sell raw material material to the other team they keep isolated we've seen this as behavior which also goes back in in an organization now a, a team only says that if i get business only i am going to put my effort i am not going to you know go across to another department see what is the way in which we can collaborate with you know where you can probably get a you know billing back to the group as well so you know, how well are you able to leverage that building relationship in advance when you say hitting every high point 
when I'm planning for the high point, what do we do otherwise? Am I leveraging my relationship building and, and set the relationship much ahead? Not when I need it. Now, many people, when you talk about networking, they think, they say that, no, I will build relationship only you know, when I have a need. Mm, no, that's not going to work. You people want to see that you are genuine. And to that extent, we have seen that, you no? Know? People want to be, uh, you know, seen when the need is there, you need to go and help them. Not your need, their need, so to speak. So again, we ask them, but we have a tabletop uh, discussion around this based for the specific organization to say, what are those high points? Then look at this. What are, did we plan for all 10 rounds? You know, did you use it to focus on boy one? And did you extend your planning horizon? Planning horizon is how much of you know, cash is something which is constrained. People realize that in the game, $50,000 is not much because every product is about $500. So you can maximum probably do 10 products. But we have seen in, in, uh, in, in a perfect uh, play situation, teams go and stand with 100 products. And the only way that's possible is you are churning the cash flow. Even if you're getting a $500 profit, it is still a profit. You don't have to wait for a $10,000 profit only. How do you leverage that? Because your machinery cannot be idle. Your people cannot be idle. How do you leverage that and start using those resources? Also? And that's where, again, using the crew wisely. So it's all intertwined when you talk about you know, a change and how do you leverage the change situation that's happening. Again, you're saying, did we assign tasks responsibly? Because we have seen, again, five, six people, everybody keeps building. Or then they're going buying, yeah, or negotiating to how to buy or build, you know, get the raw material only. But they are not looking at, okay, this is one area of revenue for us. Can I prepare another area of revenue by selling the raw material, by setting, you know, negotiating to say that I will get a stake in the product that you sell. If I get ten thousand dollars, are you willing to share twenty percent of it? No, that's something which the teams can as well do. Are we allowing the team also to do? So sometimes what happens, we have seen this behavior. Team members want to do it, but the so-called leader or people around may say, hey, don't do that. You know, let's not get into that. That's not a way to do it. So whatever, they constrained the, you know, the stop that whole uh, discussion process. Are we willing to reassign everybody? No, we have always seen that, again, this is something which is very typical. If I allocate a task at the beginning, entire 10 rounds, people are expecting only that person to run around and do it. Is there any way, if somebody is very good, you know, good in doing some task, can we leverage that person to do something, you know, uh, that one much more quicker? Or is there anywhere, if the person is finding it very stressful, you know, for example, in a team, if the person is less experienced and not able to do something very fast, probably, you know, the leader himself or herself can start chipping in. Are we willing to be flexible to reassign this? And know how many are needed and where. And this is again, again about allocation. So it's all about crew, you know, talent management. We call it talent management within the team also. How do you manage the talent? Which also means, do I know the skill set? So again, in the debrief, we go back and we do something called uh, a talent assessment. There is a lot of tools that we can probably think of and say that, you know, what, what is your talent available? Where is the expertise and are you using them wisely? And finally, fourth point, are we building with all five colors? Yeah, this again goes back to people think, say that, oh, I will get profit only in the seventh round and they stop. They just stop because they say that I have working relationship with these two teams. I cannot do anything else. So I'm going to stop. But the question is, yes, you're stopping, but is there a refocus that you can do? Where else can the money coming from? You know, again, going back to the other three points. Our challenge is not to identify the others and stop, but how do we get over them? You know, how do we say that? How do we get the money today? Of course, that ninth round money will come, no doubt. But how do, can we get that today? Again, we go back. Again, discussion happens with rest. So you see that we are talking about the game for one moment, and then we shift the focus to the real life to say, what happens at your workplace, and how do you... Is there any way differently that you can do as well? And finally, we have this uh, coming to the change part of this. All this is because the environment is changing so fast. Are you adapting quickly or are you freezing? Yeah, it's like deer hitting the headlight. You know, they, you can't just freeze. 
change is all about movement. Yeah. And how are you also getting the low hanging fruit? You know, we have seen, uh, you know, people talk about that. How do you get quick wins for your team? Team has to show that, you know, there is a profit coming and that's when the energy also comes in. All these are ingrained in this simulation. Yeah. And there are no good reasons for being slow to act because you are not going to benefit teams, others. If you don't pick it up, somebody else is going to do it. And that's why we sign off with a very interesting thought here for the team saying that you have to catch the wind of opportunity. Change is going to come. But remember this, you don't have to know everything. Yeah? You need to know just enough and be willing to change the tactics swiftly. And that's where the crux of this entire thing is going to come back. How well are you moving you know, swiftly to capitalize? And remember, when you say profits, this again, you know, we keep talking about this. When you say profits, even a $500 profit is a profit. Yeah, because of the change and trying times, you may get less, but how do you persevere through this and then move on to the uh, bigger and higher challenge? So this is more from the deep report of it, you know, where you talk about what happened in the simulation and how do you translate back to the workplace. So when we do this, people's perception change. Yeah, people will, um, people realize that, you know what, I am, I was one of the person who made or did not make this happen. Yeah, and, and that's where we are playing from, you know, this, this perception changes and people come back and say, hey, you know what, we could have done something differently. And this is where the last part comes in, in terms of sustenance. Now what, you know, what is it that we are going to do going outside? And we'll talk about that uh, shortly. What are those tools that we provide you post the session, even during the debrief at the end of it, we give them some uh, you know, action planning exercise to say that, what are those things, learnings from this? What is it that you are going to start doing? And what is it that you're going to stop doing, continuing, etc. So, And that gives a lot of input for the leader now, leaders are also part of it, but they are observing and they get input from the team saying, you know what, we are willing to change, you know, and we will uh, want to refocus and regroup in, into this new idea and thought process. So I'm going to pause now um, and to see if you have any questions. If you have, please unmute yourself or you can put a question in the chat box. Raju, I have a question. Yeah, who is this, please? Uh, my name is Adit. I'm from Phenolex. Yeah, Adit, tell me. Uh, so my question is, I'm assuming that so I have been a part of uh, one of the Eagles Flight uh, programs myself, uh, oh, okay. which okay. was GDK. So I have a perspective and a background of uh, the value addition uh, that they bring. My question is, if we talk specifically about Windjammer, my uh -huh. assumption is that this program cannot be repeated for the same crowd after a few months because they would have already got to know how to go about it and how to maximize results. Is the assumption correct or uh, am I missing something? Yeah, if it's the same team, yes, it would be uh, a repeat. However, I want to give a caveat. Um, I have, if it is individuals coming, you know, one or two people coming into a new set of groups, that we can allow. Yeah. But if it's the same team going through Windjammer, no, you know, because they would have known the tricks of the trade uh, and then you know, they would probably play it safe. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, welcome. Thanks, Adit, for asking the question. Anyone else? Okay. So, uh, Adit, uh, just to continue, you know, what we can also do in such situation is uh, we bring in a different simulation many a times. For example, for a large uh, cigarette company, uh, we have been in a row running five years in a row. We have been doing the sales conferences. Yeah. And what happens is the teams think that they know the answer when they come in the simulation is different, but you know, uh, the methodology is the same. So they think they know the answer, but the twist comes in. The question is, what do you do? Do you actually understand the big picture of why we are doing this and then understand the concept behind either the collaboration or service linkages or uh, you know, building relationships, any of those. Raju, yes. yes. yeah, this, this simulation can be done for the project management also? For what management, management function? Repeat that question, please. 
this simulation of learning can be applied for project management function also uh yeah absolutely yeah the project we have done run it in multiple uh, situations sashik and from the starting beginner level to the uh, senior most as i said uh, you know direct report is to md of a uh, uh, large uh, epsc organization yeah okay. now thing is project management these are not hard tools however in in if you look at the pmo you still have software uh, you know relationship building part of it collaboration part of it yes those things can be fantastically debriefed as part of the uh, you know project management also okay an intact team will be great because uh, you know again we we can go much more deeper and do you know typically these are the three and a half four hour sessions uh, and uh, if you have to go deeper into it and get into an action planning mode and uh, that's where i'm getting sustenance etc or we can also help you in in future skill building you know because this is perception building this can be linked to skill building how do i build relationship can be next question yeah how do i uh, collaborate better could be a next question so then we go into those sessions also that can be much more elaborate okay thank you thank you shrikant for asking the question anybody else okay quick thing on the sustenance um typically as i said these are like 4 hour sessions and the 4 hour sessions we can do uh, limited justice but we didn't do bring in a lot of perceptions changes people have come back to us after one year you know like what adit said uh, and said yes sir you know we have gone through rattlesnake canyon and you know they they relate to the uh, you know metaphors at least now what it does is the retention levels are much higher and you uh, know the metaphors lend it to the learning also so they start using those lingo in their projects as well so that's something that happens um for them but we will going beyond that 4 hours what is it that we do now we do have a follow up session called the applied for any of our simulations where how do you apply this learning so we do a you know a half a day session and we walk the same team that has gone through uh, and again as i said if it is a um, you know homogeneous team that's better because the actions can be much more concrete and we help them to come up with actions on what specific uh, thing that they can do uh second thing is we can share mailers of the learnings and you can send it you know periodically just to refresh what the learning is and we can also offer you now reconnect sessions with the team or a webinar like this and say you know this is what we went through what are the experience you got what are the challenges you are facing and how do uh, you think you can overcome those challenges so uh, those are some of the sustenance elements that we have got um and and uh, yeah, here are some more practical details on how we see this this uh, simulations can lend to a very large size um we have done uh, will jammer recently in singapore they did it for about 400 people in singapore so uh, being a global organization this runs all across uh, the world as well minimum is 25 because each team needs to have about five people each yeah and wide variety of uh, um you know leverages uh, you know usages that you can have um as i said earlier you know we can use it in classroom setup where uh, it's part of a curriculum um, annual conferences team goes out for team outing you know we need only half a day rest of the half the team can do something else uh, quarterly kickoffs or annual kickoffs uh, you want a strategy session where you want to set some uh, messaging for the discussion strategy discussions we can use something like a gdk or rsc or wind jammer to say okay you know what and how do we see this new year going to be etc and outbound of course you know we can do it as part of any of the outbound trainings yeah some of the client is where uh, limited numbers we couldn't put more here but if you want any references we can give it for the specific industry um many companies have uh, come back for repeat and said that you know what we want it to be part of our annual exercise so this is something which we do and across the board you know it can be from uh, the induction for new employees uh, we are talking to one company now where it's it's a financial company uh, where the uh, ethics are important so we have identified a simulation where in the induction we use that as a simulation to teach them ethics now why 
how you know subtle uh, indications can change the way you know behaviors can happen etc so that's something which uh, can also be done uh so one page mailer in case you are interested we can send this across to you for all of our simulations and that gives you a snapshot of um, you know what is it that uh, each of the simulation learning outcomes are so if you're interested you can write back to anubuti or himani uh, or any of us